Given the possible nuclear meltdown in Japan, a worldwide debate will kick off on nuclear energy. In some countries, this debate has already begun and people are suggesting to switch from hydrocarbon and nuclear energy to renewable energy. If we are going to make a switch, I think it should be towards space-based energy. The current hydrocarbon energy is not a long-term solution. Expense and pollution are the two main reasons against it. Not to mention all the geopolitical difficulties. Then you have nuclear energy which is actually reliable. And I say reliable because there are more than 440 nuclear plants in the world and only a small percentage of accidents. But still, when that small percentage goes wrong, it goes bad on a global scale. And I mean that literally. Because of the atmosphere, nuclear radiation can spread throughout the world within weeks. Therefore, there will be a shift towards a different energy source. Maybe not this decade, but neither the hydrocarbon nor the nuclear energy resource are reliable long-term solutions. The best alternative is renewable energy, especially solar energy. But solar energy on Earth is not practical. The atmosphere reflects the majority of the energy. The remaining energy is then absorbed by clouds. So only a very small fraction actually reaches our planet. And then there's of course the day and night cycle, which again reduces the effectiveness. It also takes up a lot of space. You'd have to fill up the entire Sahara Desert, and of course this in return would be an ecological disaster. So the solution lies in space. There are no clouds in space, there is no day or night cycle, and there is plenty of room. By placing solar collectors above the atmosphere, it will be at least 14 times more effective than land-based solar collectors. But how do you send this energy back to Earth? Now this has been the major challenge, but it is a challenge that is technologically solved. For years, NASA has been working on a space-based energy program and they have developed a way to beam back the energy to Earth in form of microwave radiation. When the microwave radiation reaches the Earth, it will be converted to electricity and from there to the electrical grid network. You have to understand that what I just explained is not science fiction. The technology already exists. And I think that the United States and Japan will be amongst the leading countries in space energy. Because both these countries are already experimenting with this energy source. And both these countries have had a long desire to be energy independent and free themselves from the geopolitical threats that are involved with the hydrocarbon energy. However, this will probably start off as a military project. Because military technology is always first. Most of the 20th century civilian technology is an adaptation or modification of the military version. For example, the computer chip was developed by the US Army to guide missiles to the Soviet Union. Because missiles required a tiny onboard computer. So I think we will see the same thing with space-based energy industry. It will take off as a military project and later on evolve into a civilian project just like the interstate highway in the United States. But an object in space is always vulnerable against a missile strike, so it will need some sort of space defense platform. But anyway, this indicates that before we can fully rely on solar panels in space, we will probably first have to fully militarize space. Yes, it's true, space-based energy requires a long-term commitment and it will most likely be a very slow progress. However, considering the long-term energy demands of the world, hydrocarbon energy will not suffice. Therefore, leading countries will have to move towards alternative energy and space-based energy being one of the most promising sectors. This was a Caspian report by Mishirvan and I thank you for watching. Sao.